Thank you everyone for attending this webinar. We appreciate you being here. We're grateful to be able to share this kind of message with you and hope you find something valuable out of it. Um, you might be able to see in the background here the lovely view of the freeway behind us, the highway. Uh, that's I-15, the largest uh, highway in Utah that runs right by us. But what you may not be able to see behind that is the Wasatch Mountain Range. So it's beautiful here. Let us know where you're, uh, where you're located right now. Just pipe in in the chat just so we can kind of get that going. And as we begin here, thank you for those introductions, Mike. I want to just talk to you, Bree, and to you, Chanel, and, and ask you a little bit more about what you do at Award Co. So, Bree, you are a, um, what would you say is your favorite part about what you do at Award Co.? I love that I have the opportunity to meet with just a myriad of different people on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, it's really cool to work with different HR professionals and and learn about their nuanced work day. <laughs> it's always different. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. And Chanel, what about you? What's your favorite part about working at Award Co.? Um, I think that that's twofold. <laughs> uh, one of my favorite parts is working with the clients, with the HR professionals, and just hearing the different ways that their organizations run and that they structure things within their own work environments. But then I think the, the second part that I really love about Award Co. is just the environment that we have here and how friendly everybody is and just how it feels like a family and like you're working with friends. So, yeah. Yeah. And part of that is how we've done what we're going to talk about today. Award Co. does that internally as well. And we don't want to make this all about Award Co. We don't want to be a, an Award Co. <laughs> commercial for you. <laughs> we're here to talk about how employee milestones and holiday celebrations and recognition address burnout, which we're all dealing with. So we're going to start into a little bit, and there's there you can see what lovely pictures of Bree <laughs> and Chanel. And <laughs> but we're going to talk a little bit about workplace anxiety, just to kind of set the stage about what we're all dealing with, how we're dealing with it, and things going on. So there's a lot going on in the workplace today. Uh, Bree, what would you say are some of the biggest anxieties that people you talk to are dealing with? Yeah, I think. I think everybody has anxiety for several different reasons, right? Yeah. Uh, speaking with HR professionals and C-suite executives, um, given the current microeconomy, we're really worried if we can retain jobs, yeah. um, if we can keep our current workforce, if we have to lay off our current workforce, and then how do we keep that workforce engaged so that they can be productive and those hours at work actually mean something? And on the other hand, right, for an entry level or just an individual contributor to an organization, am I going to keep my job? Can I get a house? Can I pay oh, off yeah. student debt? Um, can I pay for gas, <laughs> right? Totally. There's a lot going on that, that really centers around work, and, and it's a lot for everyone right now. Yeah, and it's, it seeps into every aspect of life. Mm -hmm. And anxiety isn't always a bad thing. Sometimes it can motivate you. But definitely in the workplace, it can be a hindrance to good work. It can be a hindrance to building relationships with clients and a lot of, so a lot of things like that, yeah. especially since many of the people that you deal with as HR leaders, you hear on the, on the webinar here, uh, you are likely dealing with this on a day-to-day -day basis as well. Just a lot of general anxiety in the workplace. And then to add, add to that is burnout. Mm -hmm. Now, anxiety does lead to burnout, but Chanel, have you been experiencing some of that as you've talked with HR leaders in your work and how how they've been trying to address that and what they're doing? Yeah, definitely. I mean, a lot of employees, they have so many other things going on outside of work that work is kind of pushed to the back burner and they're like, I don't know, how do I manage continuing to do this day to day, day in, day out, <laughs> when I have all these other things to worry about? And so um, I think as HR specialists, I mean, you probably see this day to day. You have employees coming to you like, hey, I don't yeah. think I can handle this. Like my workload's too much or I have all these other things going on that I can't seem to make work a priority right now. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, here's kind of a maybe a weird question for you both. How do you both in your personal life address burnout? Because I think everybody burns out occasionally. Mm -hmm. It's not like a one and done thing. We all kind of need to take a step back. So how do you address that, Bree? And then Chanel, I'd love to hear how you do that, too. Yeah, I, uh, for those who know me, know that I am my best self on a plane going somewhere far away. <laughs> um, I really need something to look forward to in oh, my life. Yeah. I need events, I need activities, mm -hmm. I need friends, those meaningful relationships. And so when I get an inkling of you know burnout, um, I try to plan something very quickly with my family, my husband, or mm. honestly, just myself. Yeah, yeah. yeah a little self-care, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Chanel, what about you? Yeah, definitely. I think I'd say I'm similar in that, that burnout kind of comes in waves and it ebbs and flows throughout mm. the year. It's not like a, 
one and done type of thing. Like, huh, I made it through the burnout. <laughs> I did it. <laughs> yeah. I'm done. Um, you know, it's always going to come back. It, just different phases in your life. And I think definitely having something planned that I can look forward to. Um, you know, most of my family is up in Montana, so eight hours away. So I'm like, okay, I haven't mm. spent time with my family in a while. So I'm going to plan a weekend trip up there. And then I have something to look forward to. Yeah. Um, I think another thing is just, if I realize work starting to creep into my personal life, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna take my email off my phone. It can wait until the next day during business hours. And so just making sure that I have that separation so that I'm able to a little bit better compartmentalize the different areas of my life. Yeah, I love how you both said that it's important to have something to look forward to. Mm -hmm. And I think that's very true. And we're gonna talk about that. And as HR leaders, I'm sure that you deal with that as well. And part of your job is to give employees something to look forward to, whether that's a holiday celebration or a service milestone or literally anything to try and give people uh, something to kind of get through maybe a particularly difficult time or just something to look forward to. So we're going to talk about that and give some ideas about holiday celebrations, milestones, and all that kind of thing. So thank you both for sharing that. It's yeah. very insightful. So here's a little bit of a stat for you. This is from a study that Deloitte did that about 70% of employees feel their employers are not doing enough to prevent or alleviate burnout within their organization. Now, as an HR leader, you might disagree with that, and I think your view would be very valid in doing so because I think many leaders are doing a lot, but their employees may not see everything that they're doing. And Bree, have you experienced that uh, as you're talking to people? Or do they feel like they're doing a lot, but they're not you know, getting a fee any feedback from that or anything like that? Yeah, I see both sides of that story, right? Yeah. Where we're doing a lot, we have the processes in place, but things still aren't changing, so they're really frustrated. Yeah. Or we have tons of ideas on things that we can do, but we don't have the manpower or the resources or the mental capacity, right? Because <laughs> you guys have things you're anxious about as well to yeah. execute something like that. Yeah, absolutely. So. Even though you may be doing a lot, maybe your employees aren't seeing it or maybe they could see it a little bit better and we're going to try and help you so you don't have to do more work, but you can just help it be more visible perhaps. So 21%, this stat here, 21% of respondents to the same survey in Deloitte say that their company doesn't offer any programs or initiatives to prevent or alleviate burnout. Now this is kind of a double-edged sword, right? Because a company can only do so much. Uh, it's not like you can do everything for your employees. So what are some things that organizations can do, Chanel, or that you've seen some of your clients do to address burnout, even just a little bit? Yeah, I think, I think some of the, the better ones that I've seen that, that have gotten good responses are just encouraging employees to take the time off that has been allotted to them, mm -hmm. um, not making that kind of, you know, a negative stigma where it's like, oh, if I take time off, my boss is going to think right. I'm not doing anything. Right. But if I stay here for one more day, I'm going to lose my mind. So <laughs> yeah. what do I do here? So just encouraging employees, making sure that they understand that you care about them, their mental health, that you realize that sometimes you just need a day mm -hmm. to kind of recoup. Um, and then the other thing I think is just providing opportunities for there to be some sort of social aspect to the workplace. I think mm. a lot of people kind of feel isolated, especially, you know, as companies are, are worldwide or people are remote, just being able to provide some sort of outlet where employees can feel like they're able to make those personal connections, because um, that really does make a big difference mental health wise, just mm -hmm. being able to have those personal connections and feel like work is a place where I'm not by myself, alone, head down, <laughs> you know. So. Chanel, have you ever worked at a place where you felt like that, where it was just like, I'm on my own. <laughs> yes. <Long hole. laughs> I think maybe Long we all hole. have. Yeah. I mean, I was yeah. a teacher for seven years, and as much as, like, you have a team of other teachers in your grade level, you are so busy that it's like, I'm in my classroom alone with my students, and nobody knows, because everyone else has their own stuff that mm. they're working on, and they have their own students and their own things. So, you know, it's easy to get into that mindset where, like, I can't reach out because mm -hmm. they have stuff they're working out. I can't put this on their plate as well. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I love what you've both mentioned is, and it seems to focus around one thing, is just treating employees like people. That can be really hard to do, especially in a huge organization. Some of our clients have 
20,000 plus employees and they're all over the world and you may not ever meet your manager in person. So admittedly that can be a little bit difficult, but I think just recognizing that everyone is an individual, has needs, will occasionally feel a little bit anxious about stuff, can go a long way in alleviating these things. Even just something as simple as reaching out to someone and saying, hey, how are you, how are you doing? You know, that has a big impact. Mm -hmm. So let's talk some solutions here. We want to dive, we've talked about the problem, the anxiety, the burnout that we're all experiencing for one reason or another. Let's talk about some solutions. So what we're going to talk about is kind of twofold in this webinar. One is it focusing on the employee journey from start to finish, and then also how holidays and milestones play into that. Because we're coming into the holiday season, yep. especially here in the U.S., we love October through <laughs> New Year's, right? <laughs> <laughs> and, and most places have celebrations some similar to that. And so we want to talk about those holiday programs and how you can make them even more impactful. Mm -hmm. So the employee journey as we start into this, the first step, as Award Code defines it, there are only four steps to the employee journey. Now, depending on what you read or uh, what your company thinks, there could be many more. We're just going to address four of them and talk about them briefly and how you can improve them and focus on them a little bit. So, step one, fantastic recruiting. Now, recruiting has a big influence on pretty much everything. Right? Yeah. <laughs> you, you need to have good yeah. recruiting. <laughs> uh, were the both of you, when you joined AwardCo, were you recruited? Were you, how, what was your experience like there at the first initial contact? And was it positive? Was it negative? Brie, what do you think? Yeah, mine was great. I was actually a, a referred friend. So a go. friend here working working here <laughs> at Award Co., you know, said, you should come join this little tiny startup. And I was right off college yeah. and I was like, sounds good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it was great. Um, yeah, from start to finish, honestly, I can genuinely say I had a great interview experience, um, great phone screening, great, great post care. Mm -hmm. um, it, was, it was really great for me. Yeah. Chanel, what about you? What was your experience like? Yeah, similar. I, you know, was ending my teaching career looking for <laughs> other opportunities and um, had a couple friends who worked here and were like, you know what, like, I think you really like it here. It's a fun environment. Um, I think you really pick up on the job quickly. And yeah, just from the phone screening to the personal interviews to the onboarding process, all of that recruiting and hiring process, um, just felt very personable. Even on the phone, the people that I talked with seemed like mm -hmm. they really cared about me. It wasn't just like a strict interview. Like they asked me how my day was going. We kind of shot the breeze, like <laughs> talked about people we both knew. Um, yeah. and, and it really did make a difference. I w was also had interviews at other places that I was considering as well. And it, it really was just the environment and the positive atmosphere that ultimately made me choose Award Co. Yeah. Yeah. Appreciate you both sharing that. Thank you. Yeah. Um, one interesting thing about this, though, is that AwardCo has about 400 employees. So we have a little bit more leeway and the luxury of focusing on that a little yeah. bit more. Mm -hmm. What would you say to an organization that has thousands of employees? How can they focus on recruiting and make that a valuable experience when they don't, may not have the same time or resources to be able to do that? Bree, what do you think? Yeah, I would even say, too, like, organizations that have 30 to 100 employees, right? Yeah, it can be a lot. Because it's interesting how like the bandwidth, you go from like these tinier organizations to these huge organizations, mm -hmm. like for some reason resources can still be kind of scarce in between those. Definitely. Um, one thing that I would hope that the viewers would get from this webinar is that we, you can enable yourself to be successful through processes. Mm. Um, when you have processes set up, put in place, it'll take time to get them there, but it'll save you so much time and yeah. so much money because time is money um, <laughs> down the road, right? And so to those people that might feel like we don't have the capacity to really be in the nitty gritty, have 30 mm. minute long conversations, just shoot in the breeze, mm -hmm. as you said, um, there are things that you can do to streamline what you're doing now to ensure that you have fantastic recruiting, a great onboarding experience, so on and so forth. Yeah. And we'll talk about those yeah, processes. Yeah, we'll get into those processes for sure. <laughs> One thing that I did want to touch on for fantastic recruiting is that online, an online presence of some sort can have a huge impact. And a lot of times that online presence doesn't even need to be super robust. Um, for example, in my own experience, when I first heard about Award Co., I heard about it through an email list that was sent, you know, here's a whole bunch of jobs you might be interested in. Yeah. It was on Indeed, actually. Yeah. 
And I had heard nothing about Award Co., but I went and I looked at the, their website, I looked at their LinkedIn, and I was immediately impressed, even though it was such a small online presence at the time. So that's a little, that's a little bit of work that you can put in, like you, you were saying, where you can front load that work for a really great benefit afterwards. Yeah. And there's a lot of really good benefits to that. And then as we've talked about, the first contact that you have, if it's positive, that can go a long way, just if someone is friendly and welcoming and informative. And then pre-interview planning, scheduled interview, post-interview experience, like a thank you note or just mm -hmm. a follow-up email often is really welcome. Uh, have, you, have either of you ever applied for a job and then not heard anything back, like ever? Yeah, I got married to avoid that kind of rejection, <laughs> but it still <laughs> happened. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, it, it's, it's very interesting. It definitely makes you feel like, um, well, you don't want to attach yourself to something that's so impersonal that they can't totally. even say, sorry, you didn't get the job, right? Yeah. Or we, we're actually interested in your, your mm -hmm. application. What would both of you say to uh, someone who might say, a busy HR leader, for example, that says, I don't have time to do all of these things? Mm -hmm. Um, what would you say, Chanel? What would you say to someone who legitimately doesn't have the time? Yeah, I would try and automate these processes and just have communication with the people who are actually doing the interviews, those kinds of things. I mean, I've heard stories of friends who have interviewed and like the company reached out to them and was like, I think you'd be a really good fit for this. They went into the interview and the interviewer was like, well, how did you hear about us? And they're like, well, Don't you, you, know? <laughs> you, you came to me and, oh, yeah. and just, just I think that communication piece is key and like mm. any sort of automation that you can do with emails or with following up or you know delegating tasks like having someone be over like the follow-up email have someone be over like the initial contact just yeah. so that you're not feeling like everything is on you and yeah. everything then becomes nothing because you can't can't do it all yeah. Could I add one more thing Please, to that? Please, yeah. You might not have time as HR executives and leaders, and that does not surprise any of us in this room, <laughs> right? Um, busy, we busy. understand how busy you are. But you know who does have some time? People like me, <laughs> you and you, <laughs> who are incentivized by that 20, people will do a lot for $25, <laughs> right? Yeah. Or a bonus of some sort. And mm -hmm. addition to that, working with your friends, right? Um, I personally am very motivated by our referral bonus, and, and it isn't huge here at Award Co., but the idea that I get to work with my friends. I'm mm -hmm. motivated to bring my people on board. My, the recruiters here probably are sick of me because every other day I'm <laughs> like, is this job still open, right? <laughs> and so, again, enabling your workforce to help you in those things, to assist mm -hmm. you in those things. You don't have to chuck large sums of money at your employees to get them excited about something, yeah. right? And so while you might not have the capacity or even the network to do that, the people around you do, just yeah. letting them know this is something that we reward at this organization. Yeah, mm -hmm. and like you said, you were a referred employee, right? I sure was. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and 45% of referred employees stay for more than four years, which yeah. is way longer than the average tenure. So yeah. for millennials, such as the three, are we all millennials? Yes. Sure am. I'm yep. kind of on the tail, I'm on the I front too, end of that. But I'm gonna stay millennial because yeah, it okay. makes me We're younger. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Millennials make up the largest bulk of the workforce at the moment, yep. and it's only gonna get a little bit, it's only going to grow. and. Millennials have an average tenure of 2.8 years, mm -hmm. which is way lower. Like the average across all age groups is about four, four something. Um, but if you're a referred employee, you will stay more than that. And that is, that's huge. That's a time savings for you as an HR leader so you don't have to train and recruit. That is a money savings, a cost savings, all sorts of things. 45% of referred employees will stay for longer than that, longer than four years. That's, that's almost unbeatable. That's why referred employees are so great mm -hmm. and why people want to work with their friends, right? Yeah, oh yeah. yeah. Totally. Sure. So we talked about step one, which is fantastic recruiting. Step two, unbeatable onboarding and timely celebrations. So we're going to talk about onboarding a little bit more, but I just read a stat from the Harvard Business Review that said that if you have a good onboarding program where it's solid on the first day and then you have 30, 60, 90 day a plan like that, which involves recognition a lot of time, just like, thanks for being here. Here's 30 days. You've been here 30 days. Look at what you've accomplished. Yep. Mm -hmm. That can influence retention by almost 50%. Yep. Just in, th in 30, 60, 90 days. Three, that's, that's incredible to me. Yeah. Yeah. I, I wonder if you've seen that in the work that you've done or even in your personal lives. Chanel, what do you think? 
Yeah, I think definitely. I mean, I think a lot of times, and, and you know, maybe I'm just, I am speaking from my own experience, so <laughs> you probably all have different experiences, but I think that um, it's somewhat typical for after a month to feel like, okay, I've been here for a month, so I'm not new anymore. I should know everything. Mm -hmm. Like, they've probably mm -hmm. forgotten me. They have gotten more new hires now. And so yeah. just those touch points at one, two, and three months, um, just to let it, just to let the employee know like, hey, we're still so excited you're here. Like, we're impressed with all the work you've already done. Yeah. Um, I think it makes a big difference so that it's not a big celebration when you first join and you feel like everyone's so excited <laughs> I'm here. And then a month later, it's like nobody cares that I'm here anymore. Yeah. So just in, in, you know, making that part of the culture so that it's kind of a given like, okay, people care that I'm here and it's not, it wasn't just a show on the first day. Yeah, yeah. totally. Brie, I think we, in a previous webinar that you yeah. did, you talked about something that people can do just to remember people's names. Like have a, was it, was it you that mentioned just having a, a oh, list yeah. of new employees or like here's who's new and here's what they like and yeah yeah it was I, I think it was from that book right that's right yeah. yeah there's this and I have to give a disclaimer I am not one that's going to say I am passionate about business books I actually <laughs> do not care <laughs> but um, this book that I really love I've read it several times it's called The Power of Moments by Dan and Chip Heath they should sponsor me at this point I know right? well, <laughs> um, but they talk about this onboarding process from John Deere and and again, processes, people, processes. Um, but they talk about the things that they do on their first date. And some of it is, you know, the second that they sign their offer letter, they get an email notification saying, mm -hmm. um, you know, thank you so much for joining. This is your cohort of people that are going yeah. to be joining with you on this first day. This is going to be the person that's going to greet you at the front door. This is what this is your itinerary for the day. Mm -hmm. So first day comes in, they walk through the front door and then there's their name on that, you know, big screen saying, welcome. Bronson and then also welcome Chanel um, and then you know throughout the day right it's not so much rules and procedures and trainings it's more this is what we do at Christmas and this is what we do on your one year anniversary mm -hmm. this is how we celebrate these meaningful milestones and on day 90 we're just gonna make sure you're doing okay right things like Check that in. to make sure that this authenticity isn't fabricated it's just it's continued, right? We're yeah. giving people the opportunity to have multiple checkpoints throughout the year to avoid exactly what you said, right? To make sure that people are continually feeling valued and appreciated and not forgotten, lost in the masses. Yeah, Definitely. thank you for sharing that. Um, Chanel? Yeah, yeah, I just wanna add, I really like what you said. I haven't read that book, but, and I love reading, but also <laughs> not a big uh, business <laughs> book reader. It's a good book though. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but just about letting them know, like, this is who's going to greet you. This is what you're going to do. These are the other people. I think back to the whole anxiety and, like, talking about millennials, but even, you know, from teaching the next generation, seeing all the anxiety that they have and mm. uncertainty, just trying to alleviate as much of that as possible. When mm -hmm. someone knows exactly what to expect, mm -hmm. they're going to feel less anxiety, be able to come in that first day you know, a little bit more relaxed. They'll probably still have anxiety because it's something new and, you know, that brings with it a whole myriad of issues sometimes. Mm -hmm. But yeah. just being able to alleviate as much as that as possible, not keeping them guessing, like, what if I get there? Nobody knows I'm here. What if the door's <laughs> locked? I don't have a badge yet. What's like, the dress code? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what am I supposed to wear? Yeah. Yeah. Who am I supposed to talk to? Yeah, I think I love that you said that, you know, they were like, send you an email, this is what you're gonna do, these are the people that mm -hmm. are gonna be there with you that are also new, this is who's gonna greet you, this yeah. is your itinerary. So yeah, I, I just really love that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you do have a good onboarding experience, like this stat says 33% of employees quit their jobs in the first six months. However, like that HBR Harvard Business Review article said, 50% of that can be reduced mm -hmm. if you have a good onboarding experience. And we've talked about what makes a good onboarding experience. And as an HR leader, you need to decide what you can feasibly do and what would have the most impact for your organization. Because what has worked for us may not work exactly for you, yep. but there are little things that you can do, whether that's uh, just welcoming someone on their first day and then giving them a, a thank you card on their 30th day or something like that, mm -hmm. tiny little things that you can, even if it's just an email saying, hey, thanks for being here 30 days, mm -hmm. um, that can have a huge impact. Yeah. So if you could reduce that 33% to, you know, half of that, a little over 15%, that would be a huge impact on any organization. Oh, yeah. So we've talked about those two steps. 
uh, fantastic recruiting, unbeatable onboarding. Step three, intentional career development. So intentional career development can mean a lot of different things. For, for any industry, it can mean a whole bunch of things. For example, my brother is a mechanical engineer. Is he mechanical? Yeah, he's a mechanical <laughs> engineer. <laughs> and <laughs> career development for him means a lot of certifications, like yeah. Six Sigma certifications and a whole bunch of different things, quality and, and things like that. That has no bearing on what I do. Mm -hmm. But career development can mean many different things. Um, Brie, with career development, as you've seen it in the organizations you work with, what are some of the things that uh, the, your clients are finding most valuable as far as career development, and how have the people you've talked to, the HR leaders you've talked to, been doing that with career development? Yeah, I think um, KPIs are huge. Um, having these quarterly reviews with your employees as well. Actually, I'm not going to say as well. I would say that's probably the biggest thing, <laughs> the biggest difference maker that I see in my space. Yeah. Um, I would argue that it's probably 50% the responsibility of your management team and 50% the, the responsibility of us, the contributors to organization, to align business goals and longevity within the organization. Mm. Um, you're, if you're my boss, you're never going to know that I want to be a manager or maybe I'm not sure if marketing, you're in marketing is right for me anymore or if my life circumstances have changed if you don't ask, yeah. right? Um, I think that enabling your managers to have successful check-ins with your employees several times throughout the year, mm -hmm. not just once a year when you're reviewing your goals, will help your, your workforce feel like there's actually substance to what I am doing here. It's not just a nine to five because people really aren't wired that way. The psychology behind humans and what makes us up, we need something to go towards. We need to work towards. Something I think, to look forward to. Yeah, right? mm -hmm. I think yeah. people in general, for the most part, are naturally pretty motivated to, to get better, right? To do things, to make more money, to have higher standing. And um, if it's not at your organization, it's going to be somewhere else where they're going to find that, right? So. Yeah, definitely. Chanel, as, as you've worked with a lot of award code clients, mm -hmm. do they... Is this a priority for a lot of the people you've been working with? Have you heard about that? And what have they been doing? Yeah, definitely. And, and I've seen it even with like incentive programs where, you know, there a lot of different industries do have like your brother, like those certifications or yeah. even recertifications, mm -hmm. you yeah. know, nurses, teachers, like you have to keep up on the degree or the certification that you have. Um, and so just making your employees know that that's also a priority for for them like they want you to stay so they're going to help you get these certifications mm -hmm. that you need provide you the space and even reward you for that so and and even if it's you know a lunch it doesn't have to be like here's 20 bucks if you recertify <laughs> yeah. it's just something so that that they know and you know that it's something that's at the forefront of everyone's mind mm. that they value you and they want to help you have the resources needed that you can continue on this journey and um, and yeah and I think personally one thing that that my boss and managers have done really well is um, in meetings just said like this is kind of the trajectory I see for you mm -hmm. um, but how do you feel about that do, do you have something else in mind like this is where I see your strengths playing out but like you might not see that way or you know you have other strengths that you know because you're your own person that I don't see yeah. Yeah. Um, and then taking it a step further and being like okay so like this is kind of a timeline for that this is what needs to happen these are things that you should work on or work towards mm -hmm. and just you know helping them lay it out so you feel like they're on your side they're helping you and it's not like they're waiting for you to mess up or judge you and be like, yeah. you didn't meet this benchmark that you didn't know about, so you can't have a raise. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Trick to you. Yeah. <laughs> and a, lo a lot of this is incumbent on people's individual managers, right? Mm -hmm. What can HR leaders do, people watching this webinar, to help train managers to be able to do that? Chanel, what do you think? Yeah, I think just, you know, as HR managers, you're working with people. You understand the value of personal connections. Yeah. And so just those innate skills that you have, just teaching managers who may be more business focused or you know more logical thinkers or other they have other things that they're thinking about um, just kind of teaching them just basics like hey here are some things that you can do or just providing like hey here's a checklist that you should go through when you meet with your employees um, because things that for you are probably like second nature like obviously 
they're going to ask their employees about this. Well, maybe <laughs> it's not obvious to them. Yeah. yeah. Um, so just kind of helping them in that way, providing them those resources, and then also providing trainings for them if needed, or like mm -hmm. the possibility, like the option. If some, if a manager's like, I just don't feel like I know how to connect with them, or I don't know what to bring up. I don't want it to be awkward. Um, I don't know. Providing the opportunity to you know, offer some sort of guidance in that way so that they feel comfortable. Yeah, absolutely. Just even reminding people, mm -hmm. like, don't forget to talk to your people, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. can be very helpful. Yeah. So with a good program like this, 94% would stay longer if they had those professional development opportunities, and 34%, uh, there would be a 34% reduction in turnover. This is from a Forbes study. So we've talked about a Deloitte study. This one is from Forbes. 94% would stay longer if they felt that value that their organization was investing in them. Yeah. That's huge. That's, so that's really great. Mm -hmm. So step four, as we move on, lasting retention by addressing burnout. And lasting retention can be, it can have a whole bunch of different aspects to it. Recognition and, appre and appreciation. We obviously here at AwardCo are about recognition and appreciation <laughs> and rewards. That's what we do. It's a really fun space to be in. Yeah. But um, benefits and perks can also address retention. Uh, compensation can do that. Having a friend at work can have a huge mm -hmm. impact on retention, right? Mm -hmm. So as we talk about retention, Bree, when you help people understand the benefits of recognition, do, do most people see that recognition can play a part in that or are they focused on other things? And how, how do you help them address that? Yeah, I feel like I've said this a lot, but I really, I do see two sides to this story within the same organization. And it's typically the HR team understands that these perks and benefits and the concept of recognition is crucial to retaining your, your task force. And then the other hand, it's what I usually see is um, the C-suite executives need to have more numbers behind that. Yeah, um, the good news is, is there's a lot of numbers to back that because yeah. it costs a lot more to lose your employee than it does to reward them, mm -hmm. right? Um, and so if we can engage actively in being creative, again, you do not have to throw large sums of money at your employees. I can't <laughs> emphasize that enough. Yeah. But if we can be creative in the ways that we show our appreciation, express that we care for our employees, um, it'll save you lots of time and money in the long run. A lot, that's yeah. true. And recognition and appreci appreciation are integral to every aspect of the employee journey. Mm -hmm. You may have noticed this thread as we've been talking about the employee journey with recruiting, mm -hmm. you know, recognition recognizing that people are coming, welcoming them, yep. sending them a thank you note, onboarding, the 30, 60, 90 day thing that we've talked about, professional development, if you recognize that people need that and then you reward them for doing so, that's huge. Yep. That's, that's absolutely, absolutely huge. And yep. then that will help with the retention aspect of things. So 40% of employees say that they're not recognized enough. Mm -hmm. um, that, this is from a study from HBR once more. But that, that's a lot. And recognition does not have to be through a software. It does not have to be through a platform. It doesn't have to be monetary. In fact, many studies suggest that uh, monetary recognition and non-monetary recognition have the exact same benefits. Yep, isn't that it, weird? That's crazy. Kind of awesome. Yeah. 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 Chanel, have you seen that in the people that you've been dealing with as uh, at AwardCo and your clients? Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, I'd say a lot of my clients have some sort of monetary recognition and some sort of non-monetary recognition. And the non-monetary one gets way more usage out of it, as well as mm. like if you look at the feed, um, for example, if someone were to recognize me and it was non-monetary in that like basic peer-to-peer, -peer, everyone has access to this, just a <sighs> shout out type program, you'll see way more interactions on those mm. people just being like, oh yeah, I agree, so-and-so is the best, or the emojis, or just people chiming in. Whereas the monetary, like, it's meaningful to you to an extent, but you don't want it to become so commonplace that it's like, I don't another know, I've $5. seen the, dollars. exactly, yeah. I've seen the flip side where it's <laughs> like, okay, here's another $5, or where they start to expect, like, I didn't get $5, so mm -hmm. what did I do wrong? <laughs> and maybe does it devalue the recognition yeah. then? Yeah, definitely, because they're like, yeah. hmm, I thought I deserved more than that for this. <laughs> Whereas <laughs> if it's the standard is just we're recognizing this, we, we appreciate you, and we want you to know that we appreciate you making those connections that we talked about before. Mm -hmm. um, 
becomes more meaningful and it helps you be more intrinsically motivated. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. And powerful recognition, like Chanel, you were saying, and Brie, you've talked about, it does not have to be monetary. It doesn't have to be tied to anything. It's beneficial. It can be beneficial if it is, but it's not absolutely necessary. Powerful recognition is personal, genuine, timely, and rewarding. And all of those make general sense, but timely, what we mean by that is if it's not soon after the thing happened, then it won't mean as much. Mm -hmm. yep. have, have either Definitely. of you seen in your work uh, where organizations will have one holiday program at the end of the year oh, yeah. that wraps in all the service awards <laughs> yeah. for that year as well? Yeah. Yes. Not saying that's bad because if you d if that's all you're able to do or if that's what your company currently does, that is way better than, than, than nothing. Than nothing. Yeah. Yeah. So keep doing that. That's great. We don't, <laughs> we don't mean to like deride that at yeah. all. But there are ways that you can make it a little more timely. So you both have seen those kinds of things where they've done that? Oh, definitely. <laughs> yeah. I think about, like, I use this experience like a birthday, right? Mm. If somebody says, hey, happy birthday, a mm. month later after my birthday, Doesn't it's going to be like, thank you so Thanks. much, but it's actually someone else's birthday today. <laughs> <laughs> like it's that. not mine, right? Uh, yeah. 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 Time, being timely matters. It's, mm -hmm. an, it's important to... Um, make sure that I'm telling you in the moment of like Chanel, what you did for me yesterday or two hours ago on that project, mm -hmm. it saved Huge. me yeah. X, Y, and Z today and I just can't thank you enough. Yeah. Right? It's just warm, fuzzy feelings. And, and the cool thing about timeliness too is later that day, Chanel is just going to be thinking about that all day, mm -hmm. right? That thank you so much. Um, yeah. it, it'll it'll carry you through your next recognition. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And we did a study in Award Co where we looked at all of the stats from our from our clients last year, called it the state of recognition, but we found that, and this isn't, I don't think this isn't news to anyone, yeah. <laughs> but there are a lot of recognitions and a lot of hype around organizations around the holidays, mm -hmm. and then in January, there's mm -hmm. poof, yep. and <laughs> people quit. Yeah, yeah. coinciding with that, yeah. people leave. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Turnover in January is way higher than yeah. any other month. Well, because like, I know that I'm getting a bonus in January. Yeah or December, December, right? So, so I'm going to hold out till then. I'm exactly. getting my, I'm pocketing my bonus and then after that I'm, I'm putting in my two weeks and uh -huh. there's nothing anybody can do about it. And yeah. um, it can change. It can be different. It should be different because yep. you're just losing more and more money, yeah. right? So it's so huge. We, we want to talk about holidays as part of the employee journey. So again, our hope here isn't that we we explain that, oh, if you're only doing one holiday program, that's not enough or that's yeah. bad. That is not the case. That is great. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. Find maybe one tiny thing that you could do more of. And as we'll talk about with holidays here, uh, you can keep those warm fuzzies going all year long. There are many holidays you can celebrate to give employees things to look forward to. I mean, the, you can just see a few of the holidays here. A lot of these are focused around the traditional holidays, right? You have New Year's, you might have a, a holiday celebration like Hanukkah or Christmas or Thanksgiving, Ramadan, things like that. But there are other holidays throughout the year you can celebrate. And you don't necessarily need to throw a huge party, mm -hmm. but Employee Appreciation Day, great reason to celebrate. Yep. And that's in March. And traditionally, January, February, and March are a little bit gray, a little bit dull. <laughs> cold. <laughs> cold. Yes, really here, cold. Here in Utah, it's really cold. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but there are many things you can do, and you can make them impactful. Mm -hmm. So, um, Brie, what are some of the most impactful holiday celebrations you've seen uh, your, your clients doing? And Chanel, I'd love to pose this question to you as well, so you can Definitely. think about it. Mm -hmm. The ones that I think have most impact are the ones that reach a large, large, large number of your, or your employee base. Um, so, enabling your employees to participate in this or, you know, finding a couple of people in every single department who natu are naturally motivated by people and people yeah. things, getting them involved, helps spread that joy, right? Um, usually it, it, it's something along the lines of, well, Ward Co. just did a cool spirit week, right? Yeah. Where you got to recognize, go meet someone new on Wednesday and tell us all about them or recognize someone who goes above and beyond and, and tell us about them. Things like that that get every single person involved um, go, they have way better results than maybe just, hey, show up at seven, we're having pizza. <laughs> pizza Which, party. Honestly, I love pizza. I'm sure. never like Pizza's unmotivated great. by pizza, but you know, people that, that can form meaningful relationships with others and invite others to participate. It's not just mm -hmm. the HR team who's in charge of this. No, you're in charge of this, you're in charge of this, because together we succeed as a team, right? Absolutely. Those mentalities for parties, I think, help the most with yeah. organizations. Thank you for that, that's great. Yeah. And, and that week that we had the Spirit Week, those were all 
non-monetary recognition. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yep. So it didn't cost anything, but it got people involved, got people feeling like they were more part of this organization. They got to meet new people, got to even just see all the different recognitions for different people, so get to know, know people more. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And they didn't have to buy us all pizza. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> it would have been great if they did. Yeah, that's but true. We would never say no <laughs> to never that. Never say no but to pizza. Never not about it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so as we talk about holidays, there's a lot of different things you can do to maybe make them a little more impactful. Mm -hmm. So automate what you can. Chanel, um, as you are talking to a lot of Award Co. clients, what are they automating with holiday programs? Yeah, so a lot of times it's, you know, um, the very basic where we're going to have this schedule to send out at this time where everybody gets this message or this amount of points. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's not like a one by one basis. You're able to automate that, send that all out at once. But even more meaningful, I think, is somewhat automated, but more um, localized with your teams, mm -hmm. giving your managers more control over how they reward their own teams because they know them best. Um, so saying, you know, each manager has this budget or each manager has, you know, this amount of time where they can celebrate with their employees. We want you to do what you think your employees would enjoy. So if your employees would enjoy leaving the office and going to see a movie, do that. If your employees all want to go home and take a nap, let them do that. <laughs> if they, if they want to go have lunch together, do that. Mm -hmm. Um, but just being able to have that and, and one other thing is, um, having goals or benchmarks or different things throughout the holidays mm -hmm. where if like you meet this, then you get rewarded this way. Mm -hmm. um, Vineyard Vines is one of our clients and they had an awesome holiday program. Part of it was called the 12 Plays of Holidays. Um, and so, you know, they Vineyard Vines has storefronts all over the place. They have so many retail workers. Um, and so they, you know, would incentivize them like, okay, this week we're pushing this specific item. Like maybe it's like a Sherpa jacket that would only, we would only sell during the holidays, during the winter time. And so, you know, those people, they would try and do that. And if they did, they would get rewarded for it. And so there's like different incentives throughout the holidays. So it's not just one on December 20th, everyone gets this. <laughs> type yeah. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I like that. It sounds to what you're mentioning, Chanel, is that automation doesn't necessarily have to be through technology. Mm -hmm. It can be through delegation. Yep. And you can have other people do it. And in yep. that way, yes. you can sort of organically automate your process. Exactly. Yeah. Delegate, delegate, <laughs> delegate. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Another thing you can do is plan ahead. Mm -hmm. Bree, you mentioned something about including everyone in, re in holidays. That can be really hard if your organization is global. Mm -hmm. And if they're celebrating different things, obviously one holiday may not be celebrated in another location. But how do you involve a large organization or even a small one that has remote employees in holidays? Oh, that's such a great question. And I feel like, honestly, most of employees are still hybrid or remote, yeah. right? It, it changed. Yeah, sure. I don't foresee it ever going back to the way that it was. <laughs> um, and that's okay because there are ways that we can include our remote workforce. Mm -hmm. um, I think some of the things that I find most meaningful is letting them, the people that work at home, choose the way that they want to be rewarded or recognized yeah. for those holiday celebrations, mm -hmm. kind of similar to what you were saying. And who knows that better than their manager, but also who knows that better than themselves, right? Yeah. Um, so being able to let them choose the way that they want to be recognized for those events, because mm -hmm. they're probably not going to fully enjoy you know, zooming into your corporate meeting and watching you guys have fun, right? <laughs> yeah. While they're on Zoom. Uh -huh. But in addition to that, right, coordinate ways that your your remote uh, coworker or your remote workers can get together often. Yeah. I think it'll be more meaningful if you do that a few times throughout the year than just at Christmas. Yeah. Identify who your people who that work remotely are, and on March 30th, get them together, right, so mm -hmm. that they can get you know have fun together. And on mm -hmm. on July 21st, you know, yeah. another opportunity. Send them some money for for lunch. If everybody's already eating lunch at the company that you're paying for, give them money and they can get together and, and communicate. Put them in breakout sessions on Zoom, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, there are a lot of ways that we can be proactive about unifying your remote, 
remote workforce while still helping them feel like they're a part of all the fun that's going on at your corporate location. Yeah, it just requires a little bit of planning. It right? does, yeah. yeah. And while a lot of us may not enjoy sitting on a Zoom call, like, you know, I've heard of during the pandemic, right? Mm -hmm. There were happy hours where people would yeah. get on Zoom, and that can be really fun if you're chatting with friends. Mm -hmm. Some employees may not enjoy that, but what you can do is give them all the same experience. Yep. So send them something, like mm -hmm. a, a small box of items that everybody gets the same thing, and they can then use it and then share about their experience so they feel like part of the team. They're like, oh, did you get that book? Yeah, I got that book. And yeah. mm -hmm. I went and saw a movie with this gift card and stuff like you that. You know what else I've seen too, like on that note of sending someone something, give them, if you're, if you're adamant on giving them a pre-selected something, Make it something that they can enjoy with the people who are actually in their houses, oh, right? Yeah. So maybe it's That's like great. a, I've seen these cute little s'mores kits, right? That's mm -hmm. something you could totally do with their kids or their friends that are coming over later. You want them to have people around them. And, and while it's probably their choice to work remotely, they still have people that they can share this with mm -hmm. and they can associate that thing that you're giving them, that meaningful curated gift with your organization. So when I'm here with you two at dinner, I can say, well, Award Co actually did this for me and I'm really glad that we can have s'mores together, right? Or something <laughs> yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Mm -hmm. So we've talked about a few things. We've talked about planning ahead. We've talked about how you can make it impactful for remote workers, holiday celebrations specifically. Now, how do you make holiday celebrations um, impactful? In another way, you can do more with less. So the main point about this is that it's not always about budget. Mm -hmm. um, Chanel, I wonder if you hear a lot of times when you maybe suggest a holiday program to some of your clients, if they might be like, well, that'd be great, we just don't have budget. Mm -hmm. Do you hear that a lot? And what do you say to them? If, yeah, if so? I say, you know, what we've been saying, it doesn't have to be monetary. You don't, it doesn't have to be something where you throw money at them. Um, but it can be something where, you know, like we said, you plan ahead, you have set things where like, okay, on this day, everyone's going to focus on this and so when you see this send a shout out into this channel or let somebody know about this or on this day we're all going to look for somebody who you know went out of their way to be kind to someone let us know when you saw people do that or something yeah. like that just yeah. making that space so that they can enjoy the holidays have things to look forward to mm -hmm. it's different than just the regular work day yeah. um, changing things up a bit and you don't have to throw money at them. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Something that I've seen too, right, is enable, again, enabling your employees to participate. Um, this isn't to say like ask your employees to do more. You might not have $20,000 to run a Christmas initiative, yeah, but you might amazing. have at least 200 or 100 or $25 to give as a prize to the person who brings the best chili. Uh -huh. or the best cookies at work, right? Yes. You, you can do yeah. these fun contests where your employees can come and bring something that they're really proud of. Everybody's trying to figure out who has the best cookie mm -hmm. recipe or whatever. The yes. winner gets $25 if that's yeah. something that you really need, right? You're not funding them. They're they're providing the fun and you're you're rewarding that person, right? Yeah. So do do less mm -hmm. with or and do more with less. And everyone still gets to participate. Yep. Everyone gets to come together and be the taste testers. Yeah, yep. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And what is a holiday program except a reason to get people together to yep. celebrate? Yep. Exactly. Right? Exactly. It doesn't necessarily have to be tied to an actual federal holiday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Like our spirit week. Random. Yep. Totally random. <laughs> yes. And that was non-monetary. Like like you, mm -hmm. like you mentioned, Chanel. So we want to talk about some holiday programs or just examples of them to give every, all of you here on, on this webinar some ideas of what you can do. Um, feel free to also ask us some questions because we will have some time for a Q&A here in a moment or two about uh, any questions you might have about how do I do this or what about this? And uh, we can pose those to Chanel and to Brie and we'll get some answers for you. But I want to ask if both of you can think of one holiday program that was either really unique or even just uh, unique in the way it was executed. Maybe it was a holiday program like a Christmas party, but it was unique in the way it was executed. Um, Chanel, what do you think about that? Yeah, I have a client who, for Employee Appreciation Day, and I can't remember exactly what they called it, it was like, we give 50, you give 50, or something like that, yeah. where they gave employees $50 or 50 points in the platform that they use, Awardco, um, <laughs> to give to other people that they recognize doing a good job so that they were able to feel like they're able to recognize other people and kind of spread the love. But then also then at the end, everyone also got their own 50. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of like a, we're gonna reward you, but we also want you to be able to reward your peers. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was really cool, just the added piece instead of 
we're just going to give everyone the same reward. We also want you to go out there, reward that's cool. your peers. Participation in mm -hmm. that's really great. Yeah. Yeah. Bree, what about you? This was actually my favorite thing ever. Um, it's so weird. This particular HR director was talking about giving autonomy back to the managers. And she used the example of this one manager somehow created the hype around Shark Week <laughs> on his team. Did a Shark Week program? And I really loved it because I love Shark Week. Sure, and yeah. so on that specific team, it was like a team of 10 or something, uh, in pairs, every single day of that week, they would bring a shark-related something. So someone would bring like a shark <laughs> cupcake or I think they had That's sushi amazing. or something. So uh -huh. like it, it sounds so silly, but it incentivized them to come. And they were excited and it was a team bonding, morale boosting experience. So incredible. I love Shark Week. I want to do that on my team. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. yeah. No, what, awesome. a, what a cool thing. And, yeah. and I think that also shows the power of holiday programs oh, that... Yeah. The reason we have holiday programs at all in, in most organizations is just to get people together and show appreciation. Mm -hmm. And that can be at Thanksgiving, Christmas, Kwanzaa, Hanukkah, Employee Appreciation Day, Shark Week. Love Shark Week. <laughs> <laughs> it can be anything. It's just a reason yeah. to get people together, give them something to look for something to look forward to, and then uh, celebrate your people. Yep. To Absolutely. appreciate them, right? And as we kind of wrap this up here, we're gonna move into Q and A, but we want to emphasize that holiday programs, uh, traditionally, at least in the U.S., they are focused on the last half of the year, mm -hmm. uh, generally Q4. But you can keep those warm fuzzies going all year long. It does not have to be a set thing. You can just generate something like a spirit week, like a shark week, uh, mm -hmm. anything to get your people together. And the more you do that, the better your retention will be, the better your pro productivity will be. There's a whole host of benefits that you can get from the power of recognition and celebration in the employee journey. This is from a Gallup study, and this isn't even all the, the stats, mm -hmm. but 3x engagement, that's huge. Yep. That's, that's yep. just... Mm -hmm. uh, Your product's gonna be better with yeah. that, it's great. Mm -hmm. Less quality problems, yep. you're gonna have better, better retention, you're gonna have more profitability. People showing up on time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Absenteeism will yeah, go down. Yeah. Uh -huh. All of these benefits come from just appreciating your people, and holiday programs are a great way to do that because it just is, gives everyone a reason to celebrate. You can involve everyone, and it's a really, really positive thing in, in every organization. Mm -hmm. So as we wrap this up and move into Q&A, we just want to reiterate that the power is in your hands, just even just a little bit. If you're already doing something, great, keep doing it. Mm -hmm. Maybe see what else you can do, and maybe some of the suggestions provided here will give you some ideas. But recognition and rewards is your most powerful tool in combating burnout. So we want to say thank you. We're going to move into uh, Q&A here now. So I'll pose this to both of you, and you can either answer it both, both of you answer it, or say, I'll take this one, or anything like that. So the first question we have is, what is the name of the book that you mentioned for you? <laughs> Yes, sponsor me. <laughs> uh, it's called The Power of Moments by Dan and Chip Heath. Great book. I really love it. Highly recommend. Awesome. Thank you. And any advice for an HR department of one? Chanel, oh I feel goodness. like you might be able to. Yes, <laughs> and I've actually, I, I, I work with some people who are their own HR department. <laughs> um, and, you know, like we talked about, talked about automate what you can and delegate. Like, don't feel like just because you're the only one in your department, you're the only one that can, can do things around recognition and engagement and hiring mm -hmm. and stuff. Involve other people, like... Somebody who works in development might actually be a great party planner. So yeah. Yeah. reach out, let people know, um, form like other groups that have like interests and people can join the groups. And then when you have something that you want to do and you're like, I can't do it by myself, you have all that pre-made. You know who yes. is interested in that and who can help. That's, that's amazing. Another plug uh, that we can put in there is Awardco has a bunch of free celebration kits that you can use for a host of different holidays. Mm -hmm. It includes a bunch of assets that you can use and all sorts of stuff, so you can check that out, but definitely delegate, I love mm -hmm. that. Um, here's another question, what is AwardCo? Well, we appreciate you asking. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we didn't want to make this all about us, but um, now that you ask, um, Brie, what would you say AwardCo is? I define this all day long for my <laughs> job. <laughs> AwardCo is an employee rewards and recognition system. So all of the things that we talked about, automating service awards, birthdays, holidays, onboarding, things like that, we do. Um, we also enable your organization to participate in meaningful recognition programs like manager-to-peer programs, peer-to-peer programs, safety programs. 
everything that we do is centered around what employees are and how they're integral, integral and crucial to your workforce, retaining them and, and all that good stuff. Yeah, 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 definitely. How did Vineyard Vines implement their holiday programs across multiple locations? Yeah, great question. So they used Award Co. And so the, the thing about Award Co. is that it's an online platform. Um, and so, and, and all of your employees are in the platform. So you can reward people, like I can be in my office, but I have access to reward people through the platform that are all over the world, all different retail locations. Um, and managers took a lot of ownership of that as well, like recognizing when somebody hit a goal and then being able to go in and recognize them through the platform. Yep, definitely. And I would add to both what both of you are saying is that uh, AwardCo also has the largest reward network. Yeah. So yep. it's instead of a limited catalog, you can get you can allow your employees to choose. Like yes. we mentioned, the power of choice. Hot so. dog toaster, personal sauna, that book. You name it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Give them the points, and they get to spend there it however go. they want. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this will be our last question. How can I get pricing for Award Co. and how can I access the free kits? Brie, I'll let you and Chanel, you talk about the pricing, but the free kits are on our website, just www.awardco.com. And if you scroll all the way to the bottom and the footer, it has a, a selection there that says Celebration Kits. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can find them there. And there's a whole bunch of them there. <laughs> yeah. In regard to the pricing for Award Co., you can request a demo on our site. Or if you don't want to do that, I'll even offer you can add me on LinkedIn and we can connect there. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's great. Thank you. Thank you all for attending. We really appreciate your feedback. Thank you. <laughs>